Hello and welcome back to our channel. So this lecture is all about integrating MongoDB using Apache Spark. So in the previous lecture, we have installed MongoDB on our HDB sandbox where we have imported the connector from a Git repository which we have replicated in the resources path and after that, we just deployed MongoDB service through Ambari. So if you face any issues while installing, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So this lecture is all about reading and writing the data from the MongoDB database. So without further ado, let's get into it. So these are pretty much the commands which we going to need for this lecture. So first we need to get our data file which is nothing but movies.user and we'll run some PySpark command. So it is nothing but a Spark script which is written in Python for simplicity and then we can just kick it off on our HDB sandbox. So let me show you the data file as well as the Spark script. So this is our Spark script. So first step would be to import the required packages. So here we have imported Spark session as well as row and functions. And then we have written out our parser input function. So this function is required for applying the schema for our file. So here, as you can see, that file is pipe delimited. So that's why we have used the split function with pipe character. And we have written the row object here as it returns the each row present in our data file. So here you can see the user ID has filled zero index. Then we have the age, gender, occupation and zip code. So this is pretty much the same steps we have followed during our Cassandra tutorial. So if you want to know more, just watch it or else I'll just explain it here as well. After this step, we have created the Spark session, which is entry point of every Spark application. So what we're doing is we are using the builder method to create a Spark session where we have given the app name as MongoDB integration. So you can give anything here and we have used the gate or create to either get the existing session or it will just create one. The next step would be we'll build a RDD on top of the data file. So for that, here is the syntax. So we'll create RDD by using the Spark context and it was a text file. That's why we have given the text file and we need to upload this file into this directory. So first step would be we'll use the Hadoop command to create a directory and then we'll copy that file from our HDB sandbox to this HDFS directory. And after that, we have used the map function to pass our parser input function. So it will just assign the schema to our data file. So let me show you the data file first. So this is the data file, which is pipe delimited, which has the fields as user ID, age, the gender, occupation, and the zip code where that user resides. So it contains all the data related to users who given the ratings in our ratings data sets. So if you're following along in each tutorial, you will know what I'm talking about. So here you can see it doesn't have any header file. So that's why we have pass on the parser in function, which returns the row function and also also assigns the schema to this data file. So let's get back to the code now. So after creating the RDD and passing the parser function, we have converted that RDD into a data frame. So it is nothing but a immutable Java collection, which has some specific schema and data frames are stored in a tabular format, just like a relational databases. So after that, we will write this data frame into MongoDB. Here, the process is pretty much similar to Cassandra. So if you are following along, it will be easier for you to understand. So here we have used the write function to write this data frame into the MongoDB server. So here we have provided the connection string as well. And we have given the movie lens as a database and users as a collection. So as you already know that MongoDB doesn't have any concepts such as table. It has the collections, which is similar to tables and contains different sorts of document, which can have different schema. And we have used the append method here. So you can also use the overwrite to fully load the data or else this append will only load the updated data as well as a new data. And we have just call out the action save to really kick off our write function. And then we have gone one step further by just reading that data back from the MongoDB. So what we're doing is we are using the read function here to read the data back from the MongoDB. So it is pretty much self-explanatory. So if you have any issues, just let me know in the comments. So once we read the data and created a data frame on top of it, which is read users, we will convert that into 
a temporary view which will enable us to run the SQL queries on our data frame. So it is nothing but a API of Spark and give us the capability to run simple SQL commands because as you already know that data frame is just like a table in relational database. So Spark SQL will give us the capability to run very similar SQL queries. So here that's what we are doing. So once we have converted that data frame into a temporary view, here you can see we can use the spark.sql to really run a simple query. So here we are selecting the data from users where the age is less than 20 and we have called it the show action to really display those results on the console. And the last step would be once everything is done, just stop the spark session. So it is also important once you are done with all the operations. So are you ready to execute it? Okay then. So this next step would be we need to get the data file which we will upload it into this specific directory and then we can kick off our PySpark script. So the next step would be just boot up your SDP sandbox. So I have already kept it in running position and make sure that all the services are running fine. So here my services are running fine. So if everything looks good, just kick off the command line by using the putty terminal and log in as a Maria underscore dev. Let me show you the host one more time. So the host name is Maria underscore dev at the right local host and the port is 2222. So just open the session. So you know the password. So just give Maria underscore dev. So if you hit ls, nothing is there. So first we need to get our data file and load it in HDFS. So for that purpose, we'll again use the wget command. So gives wget https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash ashe patel 11 slash hadoop slash main which is branch slash the file name which is movies dot user so this is our data file hit enter and that's it the file has been downloaded so we can just make one directory in our hdfs to copy this file so for that purpose again give hadoop fs mac directory slash user slash maria underscore dev which is the username so just give the same path which we have provided in our spark script otherwise it will just throw an error and doesn't even execute because it will fail to find our data file so just give like we'll create one directory here mongo db that's it hit enter okay so once everything is created just use copy from local command to copy our file so give like hadoop fs copy from local so just look out for the capitalization then give the file name so our file name is movies.user and give the directory so again the directory is user slash maria underscore dev slash mongodb slash movies.user that's it so the file has been uploaded so to verify it just log into the ambari so here you can see just go to the localhost 8080 from your favorite browser and give the username as maria underscore dev and again password is maria underscore dev hit sign in and as you can see all my services are running fine without any issues so we can see zero alerts here so you can just go to the files view here then go to our path so our path was user then in user there was maria underscore dev and here you can see the directory is created which is mongodb and this is our data file which is pretty much similar so if you just open it it's a pipe delimited and having the five fields which we discuss during our PySpark script so it has user id age gender occupation and the zip code so you can just cancel it so just get our PySpark file from the command line so again come back to the command line just give like wget to get our PySpark script again give like https colon slash slash raw dot github user content dot com slash ashepatel 11 slash hadoop slash main slash mongospark dot py so this is our file hit enter that's it file has been downloaded so just let's take a look in the file mongospark dot py and this is pretty much our file so if we just come back okay so we are ready to submit this spark script on our hdp sandbox but first we need to select the spark version 2 
if you watch the previous Cassandra lecture, we have discussed that this HDP sandbox preloaded with both versions of Spark. But to run this Mongo Spark and have the full compatibility, it's better to use the second version of Spark. But if you just hit Spark submit, it will take version 1 as a default. So to make it version 2, just give like export and in capital give like spark underscore major underscore version equals 2. That's it. Hit enter. And now we can just use the spark submit to submit our PySpark script. So to do that, just give like spark dash submit. So it is used for submitting our spark job through command line. Then give the packages. So packages are very important. So it will know that where to find the packages to integrate MongoDB with Spark. So for that, we need to provide the path for the package name. So it give like org.mongodb.spark colon mongo dash spark dash connector underscore 2.11 colon 2.3.2 and after it give the name of our PySpark script which is mongo spark.py so just look out for any errors and if everything looks good just kick off our job so hit enter and let it just do its work so here we are creating the spark session then we are loading our data file so it is just pretty much doing all the groundwork now and we are also reading it from the mongodb again so it will take some time so just grab a coffee and come back in some time so here i guess the write procedure is about to start so it will just write the data in the collection and as you can see here is the result of our read operation so as we have passed the read operation on our data frame so what it is doing is it is just creating a data frame from reading back from the mongodb collection and here you can see the results so we are getting the users where the age is less than 20. That's it. And here you can see it has automatically generated the underscore ID field, right? So our file only had five columns, but here you can see this columns is pre-generated by MongoDB. So I hope you remember in our introductory session in MongoDB, we have discussed regarding one unique ID, which is provided to every document. So here you can see this underscore ID is provided and here are the unique records for all the values. So this is just like a unique key for that row. So as you can see, we have successfully uh, write it and also read back from the MongoDB. But if you need to look out for that, we need to go to the Mongo shell to make sure that our data has been successfully written down by using the Spark. So are you ready? Okay then. So for going to the Mongo shell, just type like Mongo. Hit enter and that's it. We are in the Mongo shell now. So to get the list of all the databases, all we need to do is we need to give show and DBS, which is known as DBs. And as you can see, movie lens DB, which is database is created by using our PySpark script. So if you just give like use movie lens. Okay. So we are switched to the movie lens now. So we can give command to read back the data present in the collection but first let's see if our collection is present or not so give like show collections and here you can see the user collection is here which is synonymous to the table in relational databases so every record is similar to the document in collection so let's say if you need to find the user id 100 we can give a simple command so we can use like db dot users dot and the command is fine and give the brackets inside that give the curly braces and then pass on the user id user underscore id colon 100 so as you can see we can retrieve the data from the mongodb by using the specific key so if we just hit enter as you can see we're getting the results for user id 100 so that's it. I hope you're clear how to read and write back from the MongoDB and how we can integrate it with the Apache Spark. So in the next lecture, we will be messing around with MongoDB shell and learn more about this different sort of syntax which just look like a JavaScript. So for this lecture, 
we have imported our data as well as our PySpark script in which the PySpark script actually creates a data frame on top of our data file and just write it back to the MongoDB. And again, we have used the read function to read back the data from MongoDB also. So if everything looks good, you can give exit here and that's it. You're out of the MongoDB shell. So I hope you understood how we integrated MongoDB using Spark and how the things work and how we can read and write the data from the MongoDB. So if you face any difficulties while running the job or if you are facing any issues in the HDB sandbox or received any error while running the job, you can just let me know in the comments and I'll look into it. And also I'll be giving these commands in the description below so that it will be easier for your reference. So if you like this lecture, please hit subscribe and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. And don't forget to follow us on our social media that I have linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.